Hello once again, this is Bakayaro here with another MoveCraft plugin update. Alright, so today I've got a lot of things to show you. I'm going to be moving pretty quickly. Um, the first thing is, I'm quite proud of this particular new feature. It is tracers for cannon fire. So one problem has been, it's difficult to tell where your cannon shots are going because Minecraft does not render TNT projectiles nor explosions beyond about 60 blocks. So I've come up with this rather cool solution to this problem. Allow me to demonstrate. So I'm going to fire a volley from this here Goliath, uh, and watch what happens. Boom! Okay, so you see all of those uh, cobwebs going out there. Uh, and you can see that there's the big ones coming from the big guns, and then there's these little ones coming from the secondaries. And you may see there's a Silver Empire S um, sorry, a light cruiser out there, which I have now nailed with the Goliath's main battery. Um, and let me do that again so that you can see what's happening. And I won't zoom in this time so you can see it uh, just as you would. Okay. Uh, so you may note the trajectory of my two weapons is different. The main batteries has a different trajectory than the secondaries. Uh, and you can see where they explode. It puts little uh, glowstones um, where the cannon shells are exploding off there in the distance. So that you can adjust your aim as necessary. This is particularly useful for long range weapons. You see those glowstones, those are all exploding shells. As I say, particularly useful for long range weaponry. Um, you won't get those glowstones unless uh, the target, I'm sorry, unless the explosion is beyond your visual range. And another important thing to note, those cobwebs do not in fact actually exist. Uh, the plugin sends a packet to your client telling it that there is a cobweb there, but there is not an actual cobweb on the server. What that means is the cobweb will not obstruct a ship, for example, uh, and uh, subsequent TNT volleys will not be obstructed by the cobweb. Uh, so flying TNT projectiles won't be obstructed by it. Now it will look like they are on your client, but they don't really. It's kind of hard to explain, uh, but just understand that on the server side, the projectiles are going where they're supposed to be going. Okay, so that's cool. So another problem that has plagued Movecraft for a long time is that I like to use these fireball guns. Uh, these are dispensers loaded with fireballs. Um, you use those in order to set fire to an enemy ship once you've gotten through its armor. Like that one is, well, it's already dead, really. But uh, still, we're going to set it on fire to add insult to injury. Uh, and let me show you something about that. Okay, now, previously, there was a problem that the fireballs had essentially unlimited range, and that's just a Minecraft thing. It was always the case. The problem with that is that, number one, you could just about crash a server by firing too many of these things, and number two, they, these fireballs would travel forever and ever and ever, and you might torch something a mile away from where the battle is happening, okay? But... As you can see, I have hit my target with these uh, uh, fireballs, but if I keep going beyond the fireballs, I'm sorry, beyond the target, uh, it's having a hard time loading just because, uh... okay, there we go. So there's this other airship behind the target, right? Previously, this airship also would have been torched. And indeed, anything, no matter how far it was from the battle, would also have been set on fire. But I have made it so that fireballs now delete themselves after six seconds. And that is configurable and disableable. So if you want them to go further or perhaps not as far, you have that option. That's in your config.yml. The uh, attribute you want to change is fireball lifespan, and it defaults to six seconds. Okay, so these are some important usability improvements, uh, so that now it's much easier to aim at long distances, and fireballs have limited lifespans. Alright, another important thing. So you may notice this light cruiser, I nailed it in the cannon. 
previously, there was a problem where water would come streaming out of the cannon after you hit it. Now, the new behavior is, explosions are not capable of damaging blocks that are holding the water in. So this ship, if anyone had been piloting it, would be sinking, but water would never have streamed off of it, which had always been a problem in the past. Uh, so that is also now fixed. To demonstrate how that works, I'm going to just grab some TNT, uh, because it, it affects all explosions, not just uh, cannon fire. And I'm just going to put lots of TNT all around this uh, one remaining cannon. And I'm going to light it. And let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see it demolished the area all around the cannon, but did not harm where the water actually is. So again, an important usability improvement. Okay, so let's move on from combat to functionality. Alright, to demonstrate these next features, I'm going to use the good old torpedo submersible airship, the Minnow Mark II. Uh, which you see right here. We're going to hop on board. The first thing I want to show you, uh, people have been asking this for quite some time, uh, is the Ascend and Descend sign. So I'm going to get rid of that sign first. I'm going to put a sign that says Ascend colon off. And there we go. Now I'll put another sign which will, send, which will say Descend colon off. Okay. Now, if I take control of my uh, craft here, and I right-click Ascend, the craft will begin to rise. Now, what it is actually doing is it is using the cruise rules in order to rise. Uh, and you can set up a vert cruise skip blocks, just like the cruise skip blocks, but only applying to vertical movement. And if you do set up that number, then it will use those values instead of cruise skip blocks. The reason you'd want to do that is because you may not want airships to move vertically as quickly as they can forward. Uh, because it's not realistic, number one, and number two, it also lags the server. Uh, so the plugin is written in such a way to optimize forward movement. And upwards movement or downwards movement, and the worst is rotations, by the way, uh, all of those are handled much more slowly. Okay, so we now have the descend and ascend, uh, and we can use vert cruise skip blocks to control that behavior. The other thing that I want to show you, as you may notice, so right now I'm moving at a fairly good rate, but as I get close to that water, which, uh, give me just a second, because I did gain a bit of altitude, but uh, once it hits the water, instead of skipping blocks, it will then move one block at a time. Now, it has to do that because of the way the underwater engine works. It has to track where all of the water is, if that makes any sense. Uh, so it has to slow down movement to one block at a time. But I think it also adds a certain amount of realism that diving is a little slower uh, once you get in the actual water. And if you were in a submarine, what it would mean is diving is slower than going up. Uh, so, you know, I, I find it adds a certain amount of realism uh, but it is necessary for the plugin to function. So you may notice now I'm moving considerably slower, but I'm still diving. Okay, now another thing we should talk about. So I'm now going to switch back to ascending to get above the water again. So you can now set a vehicle, uh, and this really only applies to submersible airships. You can make a vehicle that has, that operates slower underwater than it does above water. Because if you think about it, it kind of doesn't make sense that in the old model, I could move just as quickly through the air as in the water. Uh, so the way it works is if I uh, just move using the stick here, you can see it's moving. I think that's uh, twice a second, something like that. It would be faster overall if I was cruising, but uh, there you go. But if I go down, there we go. I should be touching the water now. I'll use the descend sign just to make sure I'm down there.
Okay, that's far enough. And now, it's a lot slower. In fact, it is half the speed. Uh, so you can now make it so that submersible airships operate at half speed underwater. Okay, and then another thing I want to show you is that we now can control what commands people have access to. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so another problem that we've observed in combat uh, is sometimes players will use cruise signs to gain an unfair advantage. Uh, or they will use the cruise command to do the same thing. So what I mean is, cruise is intended to allow your airship to move quickly forwards, and then maneuvering in any other direction, you can do it, but it's much slower. This is to encourage maneuvering, uh, or in other words, positioning, so that you want to face your ship in a certain way. Because otherwise, if you can move in any direction just as easily as straight forwards, there's no reason to worry about positioning, positioning or maneuvering. So I've added the permission movecraft.commands. Movecraft.commands restricts access to certain commands. For example, if I were to pilot this airship, well, let's start with that. So previously, you could actually type slash pilot airship. So let's say, for example, your bridge was destroyed and your ship design does not have an emergency or backup bridge. Well, that should be a kill, right? Or at least you're not able to control the ship anymore. Uh, but people would just use the typed command in order to gain control of the ship. Well, now, if you wish, you can deny them that permission, movecraft.commands, and they will not be able to simply pilot the ship from anywhere. You'll still be able to pilot it from the command sign, like that, but they will not be able to pilot it from anywhere. Oh, one other quick uh, usability improvement. You notice it now tells you the size of the ship you just piloted. So if I you know, right-click on this, it gives me the size. So that, that can be handy, especially while you're building ships. But anyway, yes, so I can no longer type slash cruise north. It'll tell me insufficient permissions because I don't have that. Uh, similarly, I cannot place a cruise sign on the side wall of my ship. If I try, it will say, no, nope, you can't do that, you don't have permission. Okay, now one final thing that I want to show you, and that is the max height above ground feature. So you've always been able to control how high aircraft can fly, but what's new is the ability to make that follow the contours of the ground. So that, for example, if you have a mountain, even though you keep airships from flying too high above, say, the ocean, they can still get over a mountain. The reason that matters is that the lag that Movecraft creates, or indeed the lag that placing a block of any type creates, is proportional to how far it is off the ground, uh, because it has to update all of the lighting for the blocks underneath the block that is placed. So when we talk about airships with perhaps 10,000, even 20,000 blocks, this becomes very important. And indeed, I find that especially large airships can create three or four times the amount of lag at high altitudes as they would at low altitudes. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to check my height, and I see that my Y is at 183. Now this airship can fly up to 200 maximum, but it's only allowed to fly 100 above the ground. So if I take control of this airship and I try to move forward, you'll note I went down. So this is meant to be largely transparent to the user. They may not even notice that they're slowly being lowered to reduce their lag. And they'll still be able to get over any obstacle uh, like a mountain or a hill that rises in their path. So if you have a server and you're having problems with lag, you can now limit it to, say, you might even limit it to only 50 above the ground, and all of your players' crafts will just slowly settle to that height, and that will greatly reduce the amount of lag that you're going to have. Now, obviously, this is not a hard limit. In other words, it is possible to exceed this limit. But it is a kind of a guideline for how high most crafts will be. 
Well, that's about all I have. I hope this has been helpful to you, and I hope you find these new features useful. I know I have. I'm particularly fond of that tracer thing. I believe that adds a lot to combat. Uh, but if you have found this useful, uh, please consider subscribing or liking the video, and I will see you next time.